In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please take your seats. How do we feel about the Easter message and the Easter story? Are we to be amongst those of all people to be pitied the most? For if, this life, if for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. We have quite a challenge on our hands, no doubt, as church. To believe in a Jew who died 2,000 years ago, who is, in fact, alive. It has been very interesting for me to journey with you through this Easter season for the first time here. On Good Friday, we joined together and walked through the thoroughfare and stopped from time to time and heard readings pertaining to Jesus' journey through the streets of Jerusalem, the Via Dolorosa, the Way of Tears, to the point of his torturous execution. And it struck me just how relevant much of what we heard and declared was to those people amongst whom we declared it as they were going their way, perhaps as many of those jostling to get past Jesus, if you like, to catch the bus, to get the last food in before the Passover. As he went his way, as criminals did from time to time, blood spattered, mocked, as Rome took them to the gallows. And yet people don't hear, or if they do hear, They don't, as it were, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest. The very idea of somebody being put to death unjustly should immediately resonate as we read stories of Ukrainians summarily executed simply to make a point. Maternity hospitals bombed when we hear of the women of Jerusalem wailing as they see God on God's way to death. People who once believed whose cancer comes back and they cry and weep and shout at God who no longer exists for them or else why would this have happened to me? Everything was looking so rosy and positive. Part of the problem may be that our scriptures, even in modern English, are very difficult to understand even for us who choose to submit ourselves to them once a month, once a day, twice a day, however frequently we sit under the word of God. Our brilliantly read 1 Corinthians reading is one of those that is perhaps difficult to understand. We have a saying in our household with Paul, if we can say it in one word, why not use 57? And I think what he is trying to say is that there are some things that bring us down and we can attribute those to the worst that is in humanity. Adam, going back to that Genesis account where Adam gets knowledge and that knowledge lets him down. He doesn't go to God for knowledge. He seeks it himself and that was Adam's downfall. The earth being firing above its weight There were two things that are godly, wisdom and life. Adam went for wisdom, but not through God, and so was prevented from getting hold of eternal life unless we became gods without reference to the true God. In Adam, all die. Humanity in its own self can only bring destruction and hardship and pain. 
That's the message of the writer. In Jesus, however, or Christ, as it is put here, the anointing under the Holy Spirit, we have life in all its fullness and we have revelation knowledge, not of our own making, but through God's grace and God's gift to us. In our own strength, we only suffer and die. But as we are open to God's grace, love, joy and kindness, we have hope, happiness and healing laid out before us. But God will destroy all God's enemies before being exalted God's self. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Once we have grasped that, it can be very easy for us to say, well, we're right and you're wrong. Your hair is too long. It's the wrong colour. Your skin is the wrong colour. Your gender preference doesn't agree with my understanding of theology. But actually, this grace, this gospel, applies to all. I truly understand, writes Luke in Acts, that God shows no partiality. You don't have to wear bunny ears to be acceptable in this church. It can be difficult for us to carry that cross in the face of our preference for worship styles, for interpretations of scripture. It seems to me that if we are to make progress, whilst I know we are speaking about life, liberty, love, hope and joy, we may have to help those amongst us or indeed those around us recognise that God's ways are not necessarily our ways. And in our gospel reading, we come across people looking for life where there is death. Adam brought death to, hu to humanity, if we are to understand our first reading, by looking for wisdom in their own strength and not looking to God. The first part of our John reading is used by the NHS in Scotland, I discovered, recently doing an MA in leadership. I suspect it's Steve Chalk because uh, he is highly regarded amongst our um, civic and uh, tax-paying supported institutions across our nation and indeed Scotland and Wales. He runs one of the most successful um, educational establishments, uh, educational academies, that's the most inclusive and actually does the best in terms of the Ofsted requirements too. But I suspect it was one or other of his uh, expressions of his ministry helping the NHS to review how it operates. And in this first passage, there are three interpretations of the word to see. The first is simply to see, to view. We are in church, we can see that there are other people here. The first disciple looked in and sees the linen wrappings lying there. The other disciple reached the tomb, goes in and sees and believes. It's a different layer of understanding and comprehension. As yet, they did not understand the scripture. Another interpretation of the word to see. And the disciples returned to their homes. This is a model for the NHS and it could be used elsewhere. We can gather data, but it might not make sense to us. We need to begin to analyse it. And then we need to actually act on and put into practice that which we have comprehended, that which we have noted. And so it is for us too, in our daily lives, as we engage with scripture, our faith traditions, and our reason. And so we should understand it is also a journey for those amongst whom we live, with whom we want to testify, to witness, that we want to bring on into an understanding that there is life in death. There is hope and love 
in hate. There is kindness in anger. But it is also a very personal experience. We can only speak of what we have understood. If we have not heard God calling us by name, as we were contemplating our brokenness and our hurt and that which we have lost. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turns and says to him, Teacher. The male disciples return to their homes. This woman turns to the disciples and says, I have seen the Lord. Who would we expect to bring the gospel of good news to us? A male priest? A transgender ex-military homeless person? That the Salvation Army have visited with a soup cup? And to whom that act of grace and mercy has made all the difference? Are we looking for the living among the dead? As in Adam, our human apprehension, all will die. But those of us who are open to the Spirit will be made alive, alive in Christ. That is our call, that is our hope on this Resurrection Sunday. Amen.